Good evening, brothers and sisters, God's Prayer Warriors, Brother Felix here. And tonight we are going to be reading from the book of Luke, chapter 11, verses 14 through verses 32. Again, we'll be reading from Luke, chapter 11, verses 14 through verses 32. In the name of God, the Father, Jesus Christ, Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit, I thank you for today. I thank you for my life. I thank you for my wife, Teresa, and my beautiful children, Emmanuel, Ariana, Carlos Felix, and Luis Enrique. God, I thank you for, for your reading tonight for your holy scripture I thank you for all the blessings that you've given me and your prayer warriors and everyone watching these videos just thank you Jesus I ask in your name that there be at least one verse for each one of our ears so that's two verses per head and I ask that when we hear those verses that the Holy Spirit stirs inside of us and that we have the courage to listen to what the Holy Spirit is telling us. And actually apply it to our life. I ask these things in the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alright, brothers and sisters. Luke chapter 11, verse 14. Jesus answers hostile accusations. Jesus was driving out a demon that was mute. When the demon left the man who had been mute spoke, and the crowd was amazed. But some of them said, By Beelzebub, the prince of demons, he is driving out demons. Others tested him by asking for a sign from heaven. Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Any kingdom divided against itself will be ruined. And a house divided against itself will fall. If Satan is divided against himself, how can his kingdom stand? I say this because you claim that I drive out demons by Beelzebub. Now, if I drive out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your followers drive them out? So then, they will be your judges. But if I drive out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come to you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his own house, his possessions are safe. But when someone stronger attacks and overpowers him he takes away the armor in which the man trusted and divides up the spoils he who is not with me is against me and he who does not gather with me scatters when an evil spirit comes out of a man it goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it then it says, I will return to the house I left. When it arrives, it finds the house swept clean and put in order. Then it goes and takes seven other spirits more wicked than itself. And they go in and live there. And the final condition of the man is worse than the first. As Jesus was saying these things, a woman in the crowd called out, Blessed is the mother who gave you birth and nursed you. He replied, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it. Jesus warns against unbelief. As the crowds increased, Jesus said, This is a wicked generation. It asks for a miraculous sign, but none will be given it except the sign of Jonah. 
For as Jonah was the sign to the Ninevites, so also will the Son of Man be to this generation. The Queen of the South will rise at the judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them. For she came from the ends of the earth to listen to Solomon's wisdom. And now one greater than Solomon is here. The men of Nineveh will stand up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And now one greater than Jonah is here. These are the words of our Lord our God. Amen. Let's go ahead and break this down a little. 14 through 23 read. Jesus was driving out a demon that was mute. When the demon left, the man who had been mute spoke, and the crowd was amazed. But some of them said, By Beelzebub, the prince of demons, he is driving out demons. Others tested him by asking for a sign from heaven. Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, any kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and a house divided against itself will fall. If Satan is divided against himself, how can his kingdom stand? I say this because you claim that I drive out demons by Beelzebub. Now if I drive out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your followers drive them out? So, then they will be your judges. But if I drive out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come to you. When a strong man fully armed guards his own house, his possessions are safe. But when someone stronger attacks and overpowers him, he takes away the armor in which the man trusted and divides up the spoils. He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me, scatters. A similar and possible separate event is reported in Matthew chapter 12, verses 22 through 45, and Mark chapter 3, verses 20 through 30. The event described by Luke happened in Judea, while the other took place in Galilee. According to Luke, Jesus spoke to the crowds in Matthew and Mark, he accused the Pharisees. Verses 15 through 20. But some of them said, By Beelzebub, the prince of demons, he is driving out demons. Others tested him by asking for a sign from heaven. Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Any kingdom divided against itself will be ruined. A house divided against itself will fall. If Satan is divided against himself, how can his kingdom stand? I say this because you claim that I drive out demons by Beelzebub. Now if I drive out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your followers drive them out? So then they will be your judges. But if I drive out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come to you. There are two common interpretations of these verses. Number one. Some of the Pharisees' followers drove out demons. If this was so, the Pharisees' accusations were becoming more desperate. To accuse Jesus of being empowered by Beelzebub, the prince of demons, or Satan himself, because, Jew, because Jesus was driving out demons, was also to say that the Pharisees' own followers were doing Satan's work. Jesus turned the religious leaders' accusation against them. Number two, another possibility is that the Pharisees' followers were not driving out demons, and even if they tried, they did not succeed. Jesus first dismissed their claim as absurd. Why would the devil drive out his own demons? Then he engaged in a little irony. By whom do your followers drive them out? Finally, he concluded that his work of driving out demons proves that the kingdom of God has arrived. Satan 
who had controlled the kingdom of this world for thousands of years, was now being controlled and overpowered by Jesus and the kingdom of heaven. Jesus' kingdom began to come into power at Jesus' birth, grew as he resisted the desert temptations, established itself through his teachings and healings, blossomed in victory at the resurrection and at Pentecost, and will become permanent and universal at his second coming. Amen. Though these two interpretations may differ, they arrive at the same conclusion. The kingdom of God has arrived with the coming of Jesus Christ. Verses 21 and 22. When a strong man fully armed guards his own house, his possessions are safe. But when someone stronger attacks and overpowers him, he takes away the armor in which the man trusted and divides up the spoils. Jesus may have been referring to Isaiah chapter 49 verses 24 through 26. Regardless of how great Satan's power is, Jesus is stronger still. I repeat, regardless of how great Satan's power is, Jesus is stronger still. He will bind Satan and dispose of him for eternity. See Revelations chapter 20 verses 2 and verses 10. Verse 23. He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters. How does this verse relate to chapter 9, verse 50? Whoever is not against you is for you. In the earlier passage, Jesus was talking about a person who was driving out demons in Jesus' name. Those who fight evil, he was saying, are on the same side as the one driving out demons in Jesus' name. Here, by contrast, he was talking about the conflict between God and the devil. In this battle, if a person is not on God's side, he or she is on Satan's. There is no neutral ground. Because God has already won the battle. Why be on the losing side? If you aren't actively for Christ, you are against him. Amen. Verses 24 through 26. When an evil spirit comes out of a man, it goes through a rid places seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I will return to the house I left. When it arrives, it finds the house swept clean and put in order. Then it goes and takes seven other spirits, more wicked than itself, and they go in and live there. And the final condition of that man is worse than the first. Jesus was illustrating an unfortunate human tendency. Our desire to reform often does not last long. In Israel's history, almost as soon as a good king would put down idols, a bad king would set them up again. It is not enough to be emptied of evil. We must then be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit to accomplish God's new purpose in our lives. Amen. You can see uh, Matthew chapter 12 verses 43 through 45 or Galatians chapter 5 verses 22. Verses 27 and 28. As Jesus was saying these things, a woman in the, in the crowd called out, Blessed is the mother who gave you birth and nursed you. He replied, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it. Jesus was speaking to people who put extremely high values on family ties. Their genealogies were important guarantees that they were part of God's chosen people. A man's value came from his ancestors, and a woman's value came from the sons she bore. Jesus' response to the woman meant that a person's obedience to God is more important than his or her place on the family tree. 
I repeat, Jesus' response to the woman meant that a person's obedience to God is more important than his or her place on the family tree. The patient work of consistent obedience is even more important than the honor of bearing a respected son. The patient work of consistent obedience is even more important than the honor of bearing a respected son. Amen. Verses 29 and 30. As the crowds increased, Jesus said, This is a wicked generation. It asks for a miraculous sign, but none will be given it except the sign of Jonah. For as Jonah was assigned to the Ninevites, so also will the Son of Man be to this generation. What was the sign of Jonah? God had asked Jonah to preach repentance to the Gentiles. Gentiles mean non-Jews. Jesus was affirming Jonah's message. Salvation is not only for Jews, but for all people. Matthew chapter 12 verse 40 adds another explanation. Jesus would die and rise after three days. Just as the prophet Jonah was rescued after three days in the belly of the great fish. Verses 29 through 32. As the crowds increased, Jesus said, This is a wicked generation. It asks for a miraculous sign, but none will be given it except the sign of Jonah. For as Jonah was assigned to the Ninevites, so also will be the Son of Man be to this generation. The queen of the south will rise at judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them. For she came from the ends of the earth to listen to Solomon's wisdom. And now one greater than Solomon is here. The men of Nineveh will stand up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And now one greater than Jonah is here. The cruel, warlike men of Nineveh, capital of Assyria, repented when Jonah preached to them, and Jonah did not even care about them. The pagan queen of the south, Sheba, praised the God of Israel when she heard Solomon's wisdom, and Solomon was full of faults. By contrast, Jesus, the perfect Son of God, has come to people that he loved dearly. But they rejected him. Thus God's chosen people made themselves more liable to judgment than either of the notoriously wicked nation or a powerful pagan queen. Compare chapter 10 verses 12 through 15 where Jesus says the evil cities of Sodom, Tyre, and Sidon will be judged less harshly than the cities in Judea and Galilee that rejected Jesus' message. You know, one thing that pops out to me, it says, The pagan queen of the south, Sheba, praised the God of Israel when she heard Solomon's wisdom, and Solomon was full of faults. You know, it just kind of pops out to me. You know, we're not perfect. But if you want true wisdom, you don't have to go to college. True wisdom comes from the Holy Scripture, the Bible. That's where true wisdom comes from. And it's telling me that you can have wisdom and still be full of faults. I don't know, it just popped out to me. It's just, it's just interesting. We're not God, so there's no way we can be perfect. You ever have somebody look at you or tell you, you know, when you're, when you're following Christ and you slip up and you do something that someone doesn't like and they look at you and they say, oh, well, you know, you're supposed to be reading the Bible. Is that what someone that reads the Bible does? Is that what someone that goes to church does? 
you know, just because we read the Bible, we follow Jesus, we have the Holy Spirit in us, you know, we fellowship at church, it doesn't make us perfect. We're still men and women. We're still human. The difference is, when we slip up, do we repent? Do we ask God for forgiveness? And when we realize that we slipped up, do we try to change from what we were doing so we don't do it again? Remember, to repent means to change what you're doing. If I continue doing the same thing and just say I'm sorry, then I'm really not repenting. But if I do something wrong, and then I say I repent, and then I work on not doing it again, that is repenting. Verses 31 and 32. The queen of the south will rise at the judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them. For she came from the ends of the earth to listen to Solomon's wisdom. And now one greater than Solomon is here. The men of Nineveh will stand up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And now one greater than Jonah is here. The Ninevites and the Queen of the South had turned to God with far less evidence than Jesus was given his listeners, and far less than we have today. We have eyewitness reports of the risen Jesus, the continuing power of the Holy Spirit unleashed at Pentecost, Easy access to a Bible and knowledge of 2,000 years of Christ's acts through his church. With the knowledge and insight available to us, our response to Christ ought to be even more complete and wholehearted. Amen. I mean, just think of everything that God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit has done for you in your life. I think about what he's done for me. He's done miraculous things for me and people around me. I've seen miracles. I have seen miracles. So my worship should be more complete and more wholehearted than those that were of the Ninevites or the Queen of the South. You ought to be more wholehearted and more complete for all the miracles that you've seen Jesus do in your lives. I know Jesus has done something in your life because he loves all of us. Just think back at a time that you felt helpless, at a time when you felt that there was no way out, at a time when you didn't know how you were going to make it. And just think about how Jesus came in and gave you a hand up, opened up the door to give you a way out, changed the situation so that you'd be victorious. I put my trust in you, Jesus. I'm going through a situation right now. But I put my trust in Jesus. Even if he comes in the last hour, 59th minute, 59th second. If I stand firm. If we stand firm in our faith. He will come. Remember. Yesterday, we read about how faithful God is. He is faithful. We must remain faithful. Even when it seems that all is lost, we must remain faithful. And He will remain faithful to us. Not because I say, but because His Word says so. And this is the living water. 
This is the Holy Spirit. This is the living word of God. And I believe it with all my heart. And I really pray to God that you guys believe this word with your whole heart too. I love you brothers and sisters. Let's pray. In the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ, Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit, I just thank you for tonight's reading. I thank you for all your prayer warriors, all my brothers and sisters watching this video. I thank you for speaking to me through your holy scriptures again, Lord. I give you thanks for your Holy Spirit. I give you thanks for our life, for breathing life into our lungs today. I just come and I put all my problems at your feet, Jesus. I let you sort them out. I just ask for protection, healing, blessings, forgiveness, love, guidance. For you to keep us healthy, happy, and safe. For everybody watching this video. And for all your prayer warriors. And for me and my family. I ask that in Jesus' name. I ask that uh, you help my son Carlos out. For some reason, he's not eating. I ask that you fill him with your Holy Spirit. And let him eat like he was normally eating before. I give you thanks for my cousin's daughter, Sophia Borge. My cousin gave me a report that she's back to normal. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. All the glory belongs to God. I do, however, continue to pray for my sister Elizabeth. She's recovering at home from the surgery she had. But she's still in excruciating pain. Lord, I just ask that you fill my sister Elizabeth with your Holy Spirit. And that that Holy Spirit takes away the pain. And lets the healing from the surgery begin. I rebuke all pain that my sister Elizabeth is having. In the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I, I command that pain to flee in the name of Jesus. I also ask you, Lord, that you continue to protect Brother Brian. That you continue to fill his cellies, the attorneys, the COs, the judges with the Holy Spirit. That he may be a light in the darkness in there. I ask that when he goes to, to court here coming up on the 7th next week. That you fill the judge and the attorneys with compassion. And that you take their eyes and put in your eyes Lord. And that they see the son, the husband, the father, and the brother. And the leader that you have made. That they give that brother time to serve and let him go back home to his wife Monica and his children. I also ask Lord that you continue to, to strengthen. Fill Monica and their children. Protect them and provide everything that they need during this time of separation from brother Brian. I love you Jesus. I love you God. I love you Holy Spirit. I ask all these things in your holy name. Amen. Great word, brothers and sisters. I love you. Good night. And I'll read with you guys tomorrow. Good night, brothers and sisters.